Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 17, Samuel R. Delaney. From this point forward, all the writers we'll be looking at are happily still alive, and in most cases still actively producing new work. In that spirit, there's unusual, there's weird, there's iconoclastic, and then there's Samuel R. Chip Delaney. Although his work is generally characterized alongside such writers as Octavia Butler and N.K. Jemison as masterful science fiction or speculative fiction, Delaney has spent much of his lengthy career overturning the limitations that audiences might place on either him or his writing. Born in Harlem not long after the fading of the Renaissance there in 1942, Delaney grew up in a middle-class family that encouraged and fostered his literary inclinations throughout his childhood and adolescence. Delaney came out as gay while still a teenager, and his incorporated themes derived from his experiences as a black gay man into many of his 30, nearly 30 books of fiction, the first of which was published in 1962, before Delaney turned 20. Much of his work is not for the faint of heart. Dahlgren, for example, is nearly 900 pages of truly unusual prose. Nevertheless, He's been nominated for and received almost every prize available to writers of science and or speculative fiction. In addition to his distinguished publishing career, he also taught for nearly 40 years at a number of institutions, including at several SUNY schools, and has produced a number of influential scholarly essays. Delaney's trademark play with language and the conventions of science fiction can be seen clearly in the following excerpt from his wonderfully bizarre and award-winning story, time considered as a helix of semi-precious stones. Lay ordinate and abscissa on the century. Now cut me a quadrant, third quadrant if you please. I was born in 50, here it is 75. At 16, they let me leave the orphanage, dragging the name they'd hung me with, Harold Clancy Everett and me a mere lad. How many monikers have I had since? But don't worry, you'll recognize my smoke. Dragging that name over the hills of East Vermont, I came to a decision. Me and Pa Michaels, who had belligerently given me a job at the request of the official-looking document with which the orphanage sends you packing, were running Pa Michaels' dairy farm. That is, 13,362 piebald Guernseys all asleep in their stainless coffins, nourished and drugged by pink liquid flowing in clear plastic veins. This stuff is sticky and messes up your hands. They are exercised with electric pulsers that makes their muscles quiver, them not half awake, and the milk just a pouring down into stainless cisterns. Anyway, the decision, as I stood there in fields one afternoon like the man with the hoe, exhausted with three hard hours of physical labor, contemplating the machinery of the universe through the fog of fatigue. With all of Earth and Mars and the outer satellites filled up with people and what all, there had to be something more than this. I decided to get some. So I stole a couple of Pa's credit cards, one of his helicopters, and a bottle of white lightning the geezer made himself and took off. Ever try to land a stolen helicopter on the roof of the Pan Am building drunk? Jehil Schmael, and some hard knocks later, I had attained to wisdom. But remember this, O oh best beloved, I have done three honest hours on a dairy farm less than ten years back, and nobody has ever called me Harold Clancy Everett again. For much more about Delaney and his thoughts on just about everything under the stars, follow the link at the top of this page to a lengthy interview from the Paris Review. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.